Many connoisseurs agree that Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is one of the world's best. It is a signature elite rare coffee. But what exactly is it? Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee can claim its origins from a decision taken by a French king in the 18th century. In 1723, King Louis XV sent three coffee plants to the French colony of Martinique, 1,900 kilometers southwest of Jamaica. Five years later, in 1728, Sir Nicholas Laws, governor of Jamaica, received a gift of one coffee plant from the governor of Martinique. The rest is history. This one plant was nurtured and a plantation grown. Within nine years, the first coffee was exported and the Jamaican coffee industry was born. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee is a globally protected certification mark for coffee that comes from the Blue Mountain area of Jamaica. Arabica coffee loves the nitrogen and phosphorus rich soil of Jamaica and nowhere else better than the steep elevations of the Blue Mountains. Located north of Kingston on the eastern side of the island, the Blue Mountains rise to altitudes of 2,350 metres. The coffee being cultivated is mostly Arabica typica. The coffee thrives in the fertile volcanic soil with its regular rainfall and most importantly under the island's misty cloud cover to shade it from the burning sun. All these factors combine to yield a coffee of exceptional sweetness and aroma, rich flavour and full body with mild acidity. No wonder then that James Bond called it the most delicious in the world in Ian Fleming's novel Live and Let Die. The result is what many regard as the best coffee in the world and the champagne of coffees. The area where Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee plants are cultivated is strictly controlled with exportable annual production at between 1,000 and 1,350 metric tonnes, tiny by world standards and equivalent to just 0.1% of Colombian production or, put another way, equivalent to three hours of Colombian coffee production. Indeed, to be called Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee it must be grown at altitudes of up to 1,800 metres in the parishes of Portland, St Andrew, St Mary and St Thomas. Comprising an area of some 6,000 hectares, coffee farming in the Blue Mountains is characterised by mostly small holdings of up to 4 hectares, but there are larger estates of up to 70 hectares in size. There are around 25,000 small holders and estates in total. Highlighting its scarcity and exclusivity is the fact that Jamaica Blue Mountain is the only coffee in the world to be packed in iconic wooden barrels instead of hessian sacks. All Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee must go through the Coffee Industry Board where the green coffee is rigorously inspected as to screen size, colour, humidity, defects and cup quality before it's passed and certified for export. This can take time and cause delays, but quality is paramount and strictly controlled, ensuring that all export grade Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is of the highest quality. So what's your name? It's Debbie. Debbie. And um, so how do you sort the beans? Well actually you just dry it down and you take out all of the coloured one, the rotten teeth one and any one that has borer in it. So for example, what, which one would that be? This one would be a black one. This okay. one would be a rotten teeth one. So you have to take out those from it, from the good one. Today, with annual production of Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee remaining very low, Jamaica Blue Mountain remains as ever elusive luxurious, treasured and delicious. Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is imported into Europe from the main processor producers, namely Clydesdale, Mavis Bank, Wallenford Coffee Company and Gold Cup, as well as the two principal estates with export licenses, Clifton Mount Estate and RSW Estates. Mavis Bank is an old and revered name in Jamaican coffee. Mavis Bank maintains their pulpery and dry mill jointly in St Andrews in the Blue Mountains. The Wallenford Coffee Company is also a long established player. Wallenford have their pulperies in the Blue Mountains and their dry mill close to Kingston which is the largest facility of its kind in Jamaica. Clydesdale is a more recently established producer 
which has swiftly, together with Mavis Bank, become the largest exporters of Jamaica Blue Mountain. Pulping takes place in the mountains at their Clifton Mount facility. The processing is undertaken at the Blue Mountain Coffee Processors facility in Kingston. Gold Cup is the brand name for the coffees from Mount Lebanon Estate and Abbey Green Estate owned by Dr Charles Lynn. The farms are located in the region of St Thomas Parish. Founded in the mid-18th century, Clifton Mount Estate is situated in St Andrew in the most spectacularly beautiful location in the Blue Mountains on the eastern slope of St Catherine's Peak. RSW Estates actually comprise three estates. Resource Estate is located at an altitude of 1,200 metres above the Yalas River. Sherwood Forest Estate, with an area of over 400 hectares, is one of the largest intact original Blue Mountain coffee plantations. Whitfield Hall Estate is in the heart of the Blue Mountains, just below the Blue Mountain Peak, the highest mountain in the Blue Mountains. The processors operate a pricing regime combined with a pre-funding and balancing payment mechanism which categorically favours the smallholder farmer. The Coffee Industry Board also operates an insurance scheme to assist farmers in time of hurricanes and other catastrophes. Extension and technical services are also offered to the farmers both by the Coffee Industry Board and by the processor exporters. In the case of the larger farms, which sell to the processors, the workers are paid and employed under conditions regulated by strict Jamaican labour legislation. In this regard, wage and benefit levels are significantly higher compared with South American coffee industry norms. The workers come from neighbouring communities and in most cases accommodation, education and medical facilities are nearby and have reasonable and accessible infrastructure. In environmental terms, the coffee is grown under naturally shaded and fauna-friendly conditions. As the coffee is wet processed, all the wastewater resulting from the coffee processing is fully treated and purified before being released into the environment. Composting and waste mucilage recycling are also becoming the norm. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee has a subtle, sophisticated cup. An exquisite balance of aroma, body and acidity is combined to make Jamaica Blue Mountain a very special coffee. But it is the mellow, sweet and creamy aftertaste that separates this unique coffee from all others, with a mild, smooth acidity and hints of chocolate with floral undertones. No wonder it has been the quintessential connoisseur favourite for so many years. Music